his lecture on moduli spaces of spherical surfaces. Thank you very much. Um, so I think uh, I will just first uh, state again uh, this kind of very basic questions, uh, which uh, uh, which I was discussing at the very end of the previous lecture, because the goal today somehow is give some answers. So the questions uh, about about uh, spaces of spherical matrix. So suppose suppose uh, that the modular space of spherical matrix um, J n theta. So by this I mean like we take spherical matrix on the surface of genus G with n conical points, and theta are some fixed uh, fixed angles. So the surface should, should have conical angles like this, where theta 1, theta n are fixed. So suppose that uh, this modular space is non-empty, non-empty. Uh, then uh, questions, uh, well, uh, is it connected? Uh, is it connected? I told you uh, yesterday that it is not uh, sometimes, and it has, can have many components, so today I will just give you a, an illustrative example and basically uh, like where things are quite clear when it is not connected. Second is uh, uh, the forgetful map, the forgetful full map um, M spherical uh, GN theta to MGN Surjective, uh, and uh, uh, well, finite fibers, finite fibers, and finally uh, the degree. So the degree of this map. Question. So, and I told you that uh, here there is a like, uh, very recent result of Euromenka for spheres with four conical points. Here there's a theorem of, uh, uh, of uh, Chen Lin, Chen Lin uh, that basically calculates this degree uh, in cases when uh, uh, the following number uh, just to, like following, uh, like we, we can uh, construct two power n numbers, the early characteristic of the punctured surface plus plus minus theta i. So if we require that this number is not uh, a, an even uh, positive integer, then there is a formula for the degree of this map. And if kind of this inequality is very important, we will see probably today why kind of why we have to impose this condition. Okay, but uh, uh, so what should I say also that uh, this spherical, as I told you yesterday, this like the modular spaces of spherical metrics, there are very very few cases when there is complete understanding of what it is. So like uh, for some for some like small set of parameters, one can describe this modular space, but usually it's very it's kind of it's still unknown. For example, a modular space of spheres with four conical points uh, and spherical metric are not yet described. So we know how to describe them in some particular cases, but uh, in general, so this is the simplest possible case, and it's just, the answer is unknown. Uh, so, but there are cases when the answer somehow is known, and I want to, I want to, first, uh, kind of tell you about these cases. Uh, also, in order to connect, connect this talk to uh, the question. Remember, I asked last time, uh, if you have CP3, 
and you have like four lines, how many lines are there that intersect these four lines? So, uh, so this question in reality is a question about spheres with four conical singularities, as we will see. Okay, so uh, basically, some known, what is known? Known, known things, things. So first, uh, one case that we can, can consider is uh, uh, spheres uh, with integral angles. So, uh, so spheres with integral angles. With integral, integral angles. So basically, we consider some kind of like strange uh, uh, sphere with a spherical metric where each angle is something like two pi and one, etc., two pi and i. Yeah. And I want to, I want to kind of describe this type of objects. So uh, here is like. A, uh, what is interesting is that this case, this case of matrix uh, is completely like governed by algebraic geometry for some very simple reason. So uh, there is a lemma, lemma that, uh, uh, so it's like this, lemma that kind of describes all such, all such matrix. So every, every uh, spherical metric metric on on the sphere like a topological sphere on on two sphere uh, with uh, with uh, mm, uh, cone angles angles divisible by two pi is obtained by the following thing. So it is obtained, obtained uh, by a pullback map, by, by a pullback, pullback, uh, we take our sphere S2 and we consider its uh, 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 so consider some holomorphic map to CP1, yeah? Consider some ramified cover. Ramified cover. Uh, and then uh, on CP1 we have, uh, well, I mean, yeah, we have like a round metric. Here we have a metric uh, CP1 with a metric of curvature one, yeah? Of curvature. Sure. One, yeah. So, if we have a, a metric on, on S two with angles divisible by two pi, then it is always a pullback of a metric of curvature one on CP one. And somehow, uh, this is a, it's quite a simple statement. You see, basically, uh, what? How do you prove this statement? Like, so suppose you have a sphere with angles divisible by two pi. Yeah. What we do? We take first some little piece of it. We map it isometrically to, to like to our round S2, yeah. And then we kind of start to extend it. Start start to extend it just uh, by kind of continue this map. And the point is that you see, uh, there will be no problem to extend it over ramification points. And so just we'll, we'll get here ramification. And also. Uh, it's important here that the sphere is simply connected. So whatever path we will choose, in the end, we, we kind of we extend the map from here to here, which will be a local isometric map which is branching. So this is the proof. Uh, notice that, of course, this does not work if uh, the surface has positive genus. If surface has positive genus, then it's not at all true that all metrics uh, with angles divisible by 2 pi are, are like coming from ramified covers. So this is very particular for, for two-dimensional sphere. Okay, so now uh, uh, you see suddenly our problem about matrix becomes kind of a problem of algebraic geometry. And uh, I can, uh, 
I like, uh, I will kind of just state it, state this problem of algebraic geometry to you, uh, just uh, so that it's just it's a reform reformulation, question, question. Uh, so uh, what kind of question do we get? So let, let uh, x1, et cetera, xn uh, be points, points on CP1. Uh, and M1, et cetera, M, uh, N, be positive integers, be positive integers. Okay, and then the question is that, uh, what is the number, what is the number, number of uh, uh, ramified covers, ramified covers, covers uh, from CP1 to CP1. Uh, so we have here CP1 with like X1, et cetera, Xn. And then here we have CP1 again. Uh, and we want, uh, we fix here the points and we want, uh, what do we want? That uh, the, this map has ramification at points Xi. So with ramification of uh, order uh, uh, order mi at xi, yeah. Uh, so this is the question. Uh, so if we have such a map, then uh, here the conical angle will be two pi m one and etc. So I, I like kind of, you see, this question is, uh, it looks uh, a little bit like, you know, like, uh, mm, you know, like this is Grom of Wheaton theory, we like take a curve and map somewhere and count the number of curves passing through certain points and then there is this kind of Hurwitz uh, problem when we take <laughs> uh, some uh, sphere and we count like the number of, of, of like surfaces which ramify with, uh, over the sphere, over some points kind of, of the sphere. We've given a multiplicity, but this, is, this problem is different. It's like, it's a different uh, type of problem, so you can call it like, I like, I don't know, just a stupid notation, but like Grom of Wheaton minus one somehow, because like uh, you, it just, it, it's a joke, but so the point is that you fix ramification in the source and not in the target. Yeah? So uh, it's kind of, uh, you see, every, I mean, everybody is doing Grom of Wheaton, why, why don't do the, the reverse? Maybe it's also interesting. And so, and then uh, what is interesting is that this kind of, this problem uh, has a solution in terms of, so there is a solution that exists, a solution, and uh, maybe first, uh, I mean, uh, you can get uh, these numbers, and the solution was first, I think, given probably by Sherbach. Sherbach. And uh, basically, uh, this problem is reduced to Schubert calculus. Schubert calculus. So uh, let me kind of try to, try to explain to you uh, why Schubert calculus and uh, what is the relation to, to these four lines, yeah? So, uh, so to, uh, to kind of to, to, to solve this problem, to find the number of such a, such a kind of such maps, what we should do, uh, so kind of solution, solution uh, will be like this. Uh, we, uh, I will do this in a slightly like ad hoc way, but uh, I hope it's fine. So we first, uh, so suppose we want to kind of uh, consider, uh, so suppose this map is of degree D. Suppose, uh, uh, basically, uh, the degree of this map is D. Let's fix it. Um, now, uh, 
take the following objects. It's like it's a, the simplest uh, possible object like of algebraic geometry. So consider, consider uh, uh, the normal, the rational normal curve, rational normal curve, uh, like uh, uh, CD inside of CPD. Uh, so we have our CPD. For example, it could be like CP3. And what is the rational normal curve? It's like it's a very simple object. Uh, it's given by uh, the following kind of parameterization. You take points y0, y1, and you map them to uh, y0 power d, y0 power d minus 1, y1, and et cetera. And finally, y1 power d, yeah? So CP1 goes to CPD. Uh, uh, so in CP3, you, you will get something which is called like, uh, it's called uh, twisted cubic. Twisted cubic, cubic. And now, uh, uh, by the way, in CP2, you get, in CP2, you just get a conic. In CP2, you get conic, OK? Now, this is kind of my uh, uh, main tool with help of which I will construct to you ramified covers of CP1. So how to get this ramified covers? Uh, maybe how to get this ramified covers? Uh, I don't know. I, I hope it's, it's OK. So now, how to do this? Well. Uh, let's take here a line, okay? Take a line in CP3, yeah? Now, what I will do, I will construct the map from this uh, twisted cubic to the line. How to do this? Basically, you see twisted cubic, uh, uh, it's at each point there is a uh, kind of CPN minus one, uh, so CPD minus one, which is uh, in this case like CP2, the plane which is like the most tangent to the to the cubic, yeah. So this is a plane, which is kind of osculating plane. And this plane, uh, 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 like you know, if you have a plane, it intersects a line in one point, yeah. Okay. So for for each for each kind of for each for each point here, I have a osculating plane. It it intersects. It intersects uh, the line at this point, and so I have a map from this uh, twisted cubic to CP1. Okay. Uh, it's not hard to see that the degree of this map is equal to three. Degree is equal to three, and then you can ask uh, uh, at which point. You see, degree of uh, the map of degree three, it must ramify somewhere. Obviously, so where does it ramify? And the answer it ramifies over points such that uh, such that uh, the line tangent to twisted cubic intersects this line. Okay. So the claim is that there will be uh, four lines, four lines on the twisted uh, that are tangent to four lines that are tangent to this twisted cubic that will intersect our nice line, OK? And finally, I don't know. Sorry, it's a bit maybe messy, messy, messy thing. But uh, <laughs> what I want to say is that in the end, uh, if, uh, yeah, it's, like, it's a bit, I hope some, some <laughs> someone follows. So, uh, so basically, in the end, we will have uh, uh, a map, a map from this twisted cubic to, to the line, which ramifies at these four points. Yeah. So now I hope you all see that we have here four lines. We have here four lines, and there is one line that intersects four, four of them. Yeah. So in other words, if we fix here four points, then uh, we need to count the number of lines that intersects these uh, four lines. And this way, we will get the number of maps from this uh, uh, twisted cubic to the line, which ramifies exactly at these four points. 
I, so this is how it works. Um, Uh, the, yeah, you can fix them. So th these four lines are tangent to the twisted cubic, yeah? Every four lines are the same. Uh, in, in reality, every four lines up to projective transformation are of the sort, I think, in this particular case. I think, so this is particular case of four lines. Okay, so great. So now we, we can, we can uh, give the, so I can maybe tell the answer. So the answer is that they are exactly like two lines. Generically, there will be exactly two lines that intersect. Uh, generically, there will be two lines that intersect, like f uh, given for uh, all of them. And so, for this reason, uh, the answer, uh, basically, uh, for this reason, somehow, we can say that, uh, uh, what do I want to say is that uh, the, number, uh, the number of matrix of uh, matrix with uh, angles uh, 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi uh, on S2 is equal to, to 2, OK? Mm. Well, modular some um, kind of some equivalents. In each conformal class, in, in each conformal class, in each conformal class, yeah, there will be like two metrics, basically, up to projective equivalence. Okay, so uh, mm, uh, basically, so uh, what I want, and, and uh, so here I explained to you just uh, the case of of uh, of uh, uh, four conical points, but uh, like this thing has a kind of generalization to to all. Uh, to all, uh, to any numbers, and then in the end, the question you will need to answer will be like this. You take some collection of planes of certain dimensions in CPD, and you ask how many lines are there that intersect all of them. And this gives us, give you the number of, uh, the number of, uh, mm, uh, the number of uh, uh, metrics we've given a conical angles. Uh, you know, maybe just I, I will uh, do one more thing. I will kind of draw to you a picture, a picture which kind of uh, shows this number two in a different way so that you, can, you will see it. Uh, not from like this kind of algebraic geometry, by, but from a different uh, perspective. So how to see that there are two, met uh, two metrics which are really different. Uh, Uh, so, uh, okay. So you see, uh, again. So I want four points, four uh, points of angle of angle uh, two pi, yeah, four pi. So uh, how to do this? So let me kind of just draw to you two pictures. So one is like a snowman, yeah. So it's like this. You see, so basically, what we do, like, uh, we take like three spheres, and we kind of pile them up one above other, and in this way we get uh, clearly something with four conical points of angle four pi. Yeah. Here, four pi here, here, and here. So basically, uh, this construction is that uh, ju just to, to, to explain to you a little bit uh, better. So you take round as two. You make a little cut, you take a different S2, and you make a little cut, and you kind of glue them together. So this is what is drawn here. So this is one example. And you can see that uh, like the double ratio of these four points on CP1 is very, very large somehow. And a different example is like this. Uh, you, can, you, know, you can start with a, with a sphere with angle 6 pi here, and here 6 pi. Yeah? Of course, such a sphere exists. It's like kind of easy to see. And then you just slightly, uh, you know, slightly split these two points. Yeah? And you get here 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi, 4 pi. 
So somehow you had the like point of ramification three and you split them in two points of ramification three. And again, you see the double ratio of these four points is again huge. And it's obvious from this picture that this metric is met this metric they're really different. They're completely different. So it just this is an illustrative example that in spherical kind of geometry, there is nothing like uniqueness of the metric. The metric is not unique if it exists. Okay. So so this is like about, about this CP, CP uh, uh, sorry, about integral angles. And, and there is some kind of uh, dangerous, uh, you know, uh, I would say uh, illusion that this uh, example produces to us is that, uh, this, you see, this is this question about the nature of this map from here to here. And we see that if all angles are angles are integer and we are dealing with the sphere, then this, this map somehow is a holomorphic map because uh, this uh, just kind of, basically this is kind of a Hurwitz space. So uh, this is algebra geometric object. It goes to the algebra geometric object, just ramified covers and obviously this map is holomorphic. And this is kind of gives you a wrong uh, idea about what happens in general. So this is a extremely, specific kind of particular situation about integral angles. Okay. So now I will, I will, uh, I will just go on a little bit uh, uh, with uh, known, known, like two, known, two more known results which I want to state. Uh, what is kind of situations in which this, uh, this kind of map in some sense is completely understood. So there are two examples, uh, two, two theorems. One by Trajanov and Luotian. So theorem is kind of combination of two theorems, Trajanov and Luotian. Yeah. And uh, so this uh, result kind of, uh, kind of points to the region, to the region of spherical metrics uh, where they behave like Euclidean or hyperbolic in some sense. So this is like very small region. And namely, uh, the following. So suppose, suppose that uh, we have um, that all our conical angles are less than, than, uh, less than one, yeah? So uh, we have a spherical metric with conical angles less than one. Then automatically, uh, the surface we're dealing with is a sphere. Uh, is a sphere, so it, it has genus zero. Uh, and so then, uh, then we have points, and x1, et cetera, xn uh, are points, points on CP1. Then uh, uh, Trajanov and uh, Luotian, they proved the following. Then uh, that, uh, so they exist, there exists. A um, unique, unique curvature one, one metric. Um, um, so conformal metric, curvature one conformal metric. Uh, uh, with angles, with angles. 2 pi theta i at xi. Uh, so if and only if certain inequalities are satisfied. And the inequalities are like this, that first of all, of course, the area should be, of the sphere should be greater than zero. So this is the way to write down, like basically, this gauss bonnet formula from which the area is zero and then uh, moreover, we should have uh, like theta i minus i, each theta i, i minus one is less than sum of other, others. Theta j minus one uh, for j not equal to i, okay? So basically, so this uh, theorem tells us uh, just that there is one particular case uh, when uh, there is uniqueness of the metric, uh, if it exists, of course. Uh, so this is basically, these are convex 
convex spheres, and they, they're just a little bit similar to hyperbolic or Euclidean case when we know that the metric exists and unique. So this is one result. So here the number is equal to one. And there is a different result, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of where you see different numbers. Um, this is a nice, nice result of a recent result of Yurem and Kontrayanov, uh, but it's kind of a little bit more specific. It's, but it's also about spheres. So, uh, uh, the result is like this. Uh, okay, so theorem by uh, Yuryomenka. Men Yuryomenka ko Tarasov. Tarasov. This is 2018. Uh, and they considered some like a very cute case. Uh, and there is a reason why kind of you can do this, this case. So consider, consider CP1 uh, with n mark points, with n mark points, points. Um, then uh, uh, now we need to fix angles. So we suppose that, suppose that theta 1, theta 2, Theta three uh, are non-integer, non-integer, integer. While uh, theta four, etc., theta n are integer. Uh, uh, now we assume some kind of genericity. So conformal structure is generic. Conformal formal structure generic assume the conformal structure is generic and uh, uh, now theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 generic generic uh, what I mean by conformal structure is generic I mean that position of points uh, x1 etc xn yeah uh, this position Position is generic, conform, uh, so this means conform structure is generic, and then theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 are generic. And finally, and again, assume that metric exists. Assume that metric with conical angles theta i to pi to pi exists. Ah, so then you can say what is the number of such metrics. Uh, then the number number of metrics is uh, uh, given by a nice simple formula theta 4 minus 1 etc theta n minus 1 okay so the number of metrics is uh, known uh, kind of it's, it can be quite big yeah and uh, why such a result is possible is because in this regime, when you have theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 uh, non-integer, but all others are integer, uh, this map, this map, again, is a holomorphic map. So basically, in this particular regime, this, uh, this modular space has a natural holomorphic structure. And I would say, so, so these are kind of two uh, most general results where, like, I mean, where everything kind of can be understood. Okay, so this is not enough kind of uh, to speak uh, about results of other people. So now I will uh, speak about our results of Gabriele. And uh, there is one kind of, uh, there was one, one thing which was kind of not explained yesterday. So. Namely, this phrase, suppose that this space is non-empty. So question, when is this space non-empty? Yeah? When is this model space non-empty? So I explained uh, yesterday that for hygienists, the answer is very simple. It's just gauss Bonnet. But what I want to do now is to explain when this space is non-empty for, 
for spherical matrix on spheres. Okay. So I think I will delete this two theorems. So, uh, so like this section is called uh, spherical matrix, spherical matrix. We've given angles, we've given angles, angles on S2, on the two-dimensional sphere. So, so here's the question. Just, I just want to state it so that we all know what question am I answering. So like this. So for which, for which, which uh, theta 1, etc., theta n, uh, there exists a spherical metric, metric on, uh, on two sphere uh, with, conic, with n conical angles, with n conical angles, uh, to pi theta i. So this is the question. Uh, and uh, well, in other words, basically, uh, i.e., this modular space is not empty i.e. m spherical 0 n of theta is not equal to an empty space. OK, so I will give you, I will now give you uh, kind of the answer. And uh, so you see, uh, I already drew you a picture last time uh, for the case of three conical angles. But basically, uh, now I will tell you the theorem which um, which treats all the all possible angles. In order to state this, uh, to state this theorem, I just need some simple notations from from uh, uh, analysis, I guess. So, uh, so. This is a question, and here is answer. Answer. Uh, so, so denote by uh, denote by um, uh, such thing uh, the L one norm norm in. Uh, uh, Rn, yeah. Uh, so basically, L, L1 norm in uh, Rn is just uh, what is this? Is uh, just sum of xi, sum of uh, modulus of xi, yeah. Uh, and d of d1 is uh, the distance, the distance, distance with respect to this norm, with respect, respect to this norm. OK. So now, uh, now theorem, which answers this question like more or less completely, uh, modular certain like boundary cases. So this is Gabriele and myself. Uh, so uh, here's, the, here's the result. So suppose, suppose uh, that uh, suppose that there exists uh, a spherical metric metric on on the two sphere. Uh, with conical angles, with conical angles, uh, 
2 pi, theta 1, et cetera, theta n. Uh, then uh, the following inequality holds. The following inequalities hold. Hold. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so before 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 saying to you which which inequality, I just I just introduce just one more piece of notation, uh, namely. Uh, uh, so I will call like z n odd z n odd a subset of uh, the set of integer points is that uh, z n odd is uh, uh, the set set of integer points, points uh, with, uh, with odd norm, with uh, uh, norm uh, odd. In other words, basically, these are all points such that the sum of coordinates is an, inter is an odd number. Yeah? M1 etc. Mn such that sum of Mi is odd. So two inequalities. Uh, one is uh, we saw it already many many times. Sum of theta i minus one is greater than minus two. These are like positive positivity of the area. And second inequality is uh, distance uh, from uh, uh, distance to the uh, to uh, to the, to this uh, odd set of points. This distance uh, from theta theta one minus one, etc. Theta n minus one is greater or equal to 1, OK? So you should be, uh, you should be on distance. Uh, uh, so th this, this kind of this uh, defect vector should be on distance at least 1 in this, in this norm from the set of odd points, OK? Uh, so this is first uh, part of the theorem. And then, uh, so th this is kind of uh, necessary inequalities. But they are also sufficient, uh, almost sufficient. So uh, what I want to say is so if uh, this second inequality, if 2 is strict, is strict, uh, then uh, the metric exists. The metric exists. OK? So you need to kind of have uh, such a thing. OK. Uh, so the case uh, when uh, of a strict inequality, when we have just here one, it was analyzed by Yeremenko. So Yeremenko uh, understood completely uh, what happens if, uh, so when the metric exists, when, uh, uh, when you have just equality one here. OK, so let me kind of now uh, first tell you what is this, uh, what is this thing? Yeah, like uh, a slightly bizarre uh, uh, set. Uh, this distance is more than one, yeah? OK, so, uh, so basically, one, one thing which I want to, which I want to say is that, uh, uh, well, basically, you know, maybe, maybe I, I, what I want to do is to, is to uh, relate it to the picture which I drew on the first 
in the first, uh, in the in the first like, in the first uh, lecture. So remember, uh, I drew this kind of thing. So this was uh, uh, this picture was uh, uh, like the answer to the question: When do you have sphere with three matrix uh, with three conical singularities? Yeah. So you had like here theta one. Theta three, theta four, theta four, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, theta one, theta three, theta two, and then there was here like a, a simplex, a simplex. Ah, uh, uh, okay. It was like this. Uh, once there was a simplex. So, I mean. Uh, the, uh, if you take like angles less than angles less than uh, uh, so theta from zero to one, you, you get inside the simplex. But then after this, what you should do, you should uh, 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 start to reflect it, yeah, with respect to to the to this uh, with respect to, to the faces, yeah, and so. If you are inside of the union of this uh, simplices, you are fine. There is a metric. If you're outside, there is no metric. So now the question, I mean, I just wonder, do you see uh, that this collection of simplices is exactly this inequality? Uh, so it's kind of funny. Uh, so this collection of simplices, I would say it looks uh, a bit complicated, but uh, mm, uh, this set in reality uh, is a, uh, you see, like what happened if we do this, yeah? What is this set? So this is a union of octahedrons. So if you just say, if, like if you take a, a L1 metric in a Rn and you ask what points are on distance less than one to a, to a given, this is an octahedron. And so what we see secretly here is that we have uh, here like kind of bad points like this uh, where there is no metric, yeah? And for example, here there is no metric. And what we did, uh, we cut out an octahedron uh, around each such kind of point. We cut out all this collection of octahedrons, and the remaining part is a union of simplices. Uh, so now, uh, basically, why do we need to cut this, this uh, out, these octahedrons? Why, why do we need to, why, the, why there is no metric for these points? Uh, so uh, because, I mean, so this is like very easy to understand. Mm. Uh, the reason is the following, is that you see such points, like the centers of the, these octahedrons, like this Z0, uh, such points, they correspond to spheres, potential spheres, with integral angles. But uh, uh, the sum of defects, uh, like the sum of kind of, um, of multiplicity here is odd. While, uh, so this would correspond to a ramified cover from CP1 to CP1, such that the sum of like uh, ramifications, min uh, indices is odd, and such a map doesn't exist. So, so this is why kind of you cut out these things and then uh, things nearby, as well. So this is kind of uh, I, I tried to connect, I tried to connect uh, this, um, I tried to connect this, uh, uh, mm, this uh, picture to to one dimensional case. Uh, so to, 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 sorry, to the case when we have three conical singularities. Okay, so maybe, maybe no, I, maybe I, 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 want to, I want to kind of tell you just uh, a little bit uh, about the proof of, of, this, of this result, namely about the proof of uh, uh, these inequalities. How do you prove them? Uh, it's because it's like it's, uh, it's rather uh, cute, I think, and it connects kind of this, um, 
story with uh, uh, spherical polygons, with polygons inside of three-dimensional sphere. So, uh, so proof, kind of sketch proof of this proof. Uh, uh, proof of uh, proof of inequality two, and this is basically uh, uh, like one place where some kind of technology is used, um, namely like real kind of certain results about parabolic bundles pops up here. So, uh, so I want to prove, I, I want to, to prove this thing uh, that uh, the, like the distance to odd points from this thing is at least one. So now, uh, so there is a kind of uh, important notion which I haven't yet discussed. Namely, whenever you have a spherical metric, so kind of uh, like statement, so uh, a spherical metric, a spherical metric on like on a, on any surface, but in particular on S two, uh, give us uh, us a, uh, a homomorphism to uh, like monodromy map give us a homomorphism homomorphism of a fundamental group of uh, of the uh, from pi 1 of the complement to these points to uh, well s o 3 okay and uh, well this is kind of it's just monodromy map monodromy When you have like a sphere with, with conical singularities, uh, or like not necessarily sphere but any surface, somehow if you uh, you can like it's like it's a, a terrible thing. I don't know how to explain this monodromy map in in good way, but uh, what what is doing is uh, uh, this loop around this uh, kind of uh, point will be sent. To a rotation by angle two pi theta i minus one, like around this point somehow. So this is this modern Ruby map, and uh, and what is important is that uh, uh, so basically you get a monodromy for each uh, certain monodromy for each conical point, and the product of this monodromy is, is equal to to one. So you get basically a collection of orthogonal matrices whose product is equal to one. And moreover, like I, this I, I will not prove to you, but this is again interesting thing is that uh, from from um, also from such a in reality this monodromy can be lifted to to SU two to the map to SU two always. Um, so in reality, you get a collection of matrices. Uh, unitary matrices uh, like from from s u two uh, whose product is equal to to one uh, okay so now uh, now um, so uh, let me kind of write it down as a definition so definition uh, uh, definition uh, is that uh, so? A standard set of matrices, standard standard set of matrices, matrices, uh, like for like certain numbers theta one, etc., theta n in R n plus uh, is a is an n tuple. And tuple uh, of matrices uh, of elements of SU two 
uh, namely, we have like uh, u1, etc., un. So u1, uh, ta ta ta, un. And moreover, the product of them is equal to, to 1. OK? Uh, product is equal to 1. And uh, uh, finally, uh, eigenvalues, eigenvalues values of uh, uh, u, u, of the matrix uj are like this exponent of pl uh, plus minus i pi theta i minus 1. So this is the standard set of matrices here. So just you have your matrices with uh, given eigenvalues, and their product is equal to 1. And then what I was trying to explain here, what, uh, here is the following, is that uh, uh, basically uh, uh, to, each, uh, to each sphere with conical singularities, we associate we can associate a standard set of matrices. So this is kind of lemma. Uh, to each, each, uh, to each sphere with conical, with conical singularities, singularities, we associate. Uh, a standard set of matrices, a standard, standard set of matrices. OK? And now, so you see, it's just a question of, uh, you can say it's a question of linear algebra or whatever. You can ask, like, for which theta i one can construct a set of standard matrices. And this uh, question was answered by Biswas in like quite a long time ago in, in one, like in his papers. So basically Biswas uh, like answered the question. So uh, explained, explained for which, for which, uh, which theta i uh, such a set exists. Such a set exists. Okay, uh, but this is you see like this is like indeed uh, his proof uh, was using parabolic bundles. Uh, but now, kind of what I want to try to do is to convince you in the fact that somehow. This answer is correct and coincides with uh, the answer of Biswas, which I don't, which I didn't give you. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, um, okay. So. So the claim is that uh, uh, is the following is that. Uh, uh, so just is, is, is a kind of triviality. So standard set of matrices, standard, standard set of matrices is uh, equal to a polygon polygon in S three with uh, sides. Of length uh, pi times theta i minus one. Okay. So, uh, so wh wh why is it so? Is because uh, mm, why is it so? Is just for the following reason: is that you see when you have like a set of matrices. Uh, with these eigenvalues, uh, what you do, you take your one, you take your one inside of uh, your sphere. It belongs to S3. Uh, now you multiply one by, by U1. Uh, and you get here like a, a, a geodesic of length uh, 
pi times theta 1 minus 1, and et cetera. Like you multiply, and you get a polygon. And it should kind of close, close up. The polygon should close up uh, uh, because the product of matrices is equal to 1. Now, uh, uh, now what they want to say is that uh, now where from this kind of theta, theta, this condition comes here. That's odd, kind of that distance to odd, odd, um, uh, to odd points should be, uh, should not be, this uh, uh, is odd points should not be uh, too small. So uh, the reason here is like this, is that uh, basically you can ask the following thing. Uh, what kind of closed polygons do you have whose uh, with, si uh, with uh, uh, length size equal to either 0 or pi? Yeah? So if you have like S3 and uh, you can see the polygons such that each, each side has length either 0 or pi. Well, uh, it's kind of obvious that if you have a side of length pi, you go from one uh, pole of a sphere to a different one, yeah? Uh, so, and clearly, if you want to have a closed polygon, polygon, you should like go an even number of times back and forward. So uh, for this reason, uh, if you have like uh, all angles, uh, all sides have length zero, but others, uh, odd number uh, has uh, length pi, then you don't come back. So this is kind of, this is why these odd guys are bad. So I think, I think uh, maybe it's enough for, for proving this inequality. But just about to say that, so you, you see that you have this kind of notion of spherical polygons, and somehow uh, they seem to be connected to the spherical surfaces, but, um, but uh, the connection is, is like, it's not, it's not obvious to me, uh, well, it's not yet kind of completely obvious whether this connection is just superficial or there is something like uh, stronger behind it. Okay, so now, Finally, what I want to do is uh, uh, give you some examples which kind of show, show that uh, the moduli space of uh, spherical matrix can be disconnected. And moreover, that, um, that the image, the image uh, of this map uh, to, to MJN is not necessarily subjective. Mm. So this is just a kind of proof by picture. So now, like, uh, uh, an example, so, an example, example, uh, like, of uh, uh, of this map M spherical H uh, zero. Let it be four. Uh, theta uh, two M zero four uh, such that that. Uh, 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 the image, the image uh, is uh, uh, a very small subset, <laughs> very small, very small subset, subset of M04 uh, uh, and has three connected components and has three connected components. Components. Yeah, so uh, maybe like, uh, so the theorem that uh, I originally stated at the uh, previous lecture is that the number of, of connected components can be as large as 
3 n minus 3, and in this case, n is equal to 4. Okay, so this is uh, basically the proof is uh, is by picture. Um, uh, so it's like this. So imagine you have a, a like a, a nice uh, uh, I don't know orange. You have an uh, just orange. Uh, and you kind of uh, you are doing some kind of stra strange thing to do it. You you cut it. Uh, you cut first half of it. Yeah. You cut a half of your orange out. So this is like your kind of thing which goes like which is below. Uh, okay. And then after this, uh, you uh, left here a piece like this. For the moment, I, I hope like everything is fine. Like you, you see the picture. So this angle is say, 3 pi divided by 2. This angle is 3 pi divided by 2. And finally, mm, you also uh, have a certain addition here. You have a kind of some, something like this, OK? So this angle is again 3 pi divided by 2. And this angle is kind of very small. Uh, I don't know, pi epsilon. So uh, this is like a, clearly a, a polygon with three, with four conical points. It's a polygon with four conical points. And, and notice that, uh, that uh, you have uh, here. Uh, well, three of the, uh, it's, a, it's a polygon, sorry, it's, 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 a, it's a quadrilateral, it's a quadrilateral with four angles, and three of these angles are just the same. And let me denote them by x1, x2, x3, yeah? Uh, and now, uh, at this point, let it be x4, okay? So now what I do, I take this polygon, uh, this quadrilateral, and glue it to itself. Uh, so in this way, we, we, we obtain, so we double it. We double it. And so uh, like just take two copies and glue it to itself. And so as a result, we get, um, we get uh, a sphere, a sphere, uh, sphere with uh, three of uh, four conical angles, four angles. Uh, which are uh, 2 pi epsilon, and then, uh, sorry, this was not 3 pi divided by 2, but it was, uh, oh no, 3 pi divided by 2, correct, yeah. With, with three angles, 3 pi, 3 pi, 3 pi, 3 pi. Okay? But then, uh, you see, this picture is like uh, very asymmetric uh, because uh, it's kind of completely obvious. Uh, uh, so the point x4 is the closest to x3. So in particular, what we could, could have done, we could have like, uh, like re-enumerate these things, uh, these this, uh, uh, corners, and we will get like x1, I don't know, x2, x3, etc. So we can get like three pictures like this. And so uh, what is the moral? The moral is the following, is that uh, if we will consider uh, if we will consider the uh, if we consider the map from uh, this thing m spherical uh, zero four and then uh, epsilon three pi three pi three pi to uh, to M04. So what is M04? M04 is, is like is a kind of CP1 minus three points, minus three points. And these points are kind of uh, uh, enumerated by uh, splitting of, uh, like by 
splitting in pair of four points. So the, the, here, like, you have one, two, three, four. Here you have one, three, two, four. And here you have one, four, two, three. So this is kind of, these are spheres which are uh, degenerated. And now uh, the claim is that the map from here to here will, uh, its image will be a union of neighborhoods of such, um, such points. So this is, this will be the, uh, the union of the thing. So as we see, as we see that, uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, in order to prove this result, in order to prove this result, what you need to do is to prove that there is a like very long cylinder sitting inside of this picture. So somehow that, conf uh, that uh, double ratio of these two points with respect to this is, 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 is very large, and you can do this. And as a result, you see that um, the image of um, the map is, is not, everything is like is a very tiny part of the model space, um, and it has three connected components. Uh, okay. So I don't know. I, th I think I think maybe I should stop here because uh, uh, other results. Uh, it will take me like more than eight minutes to 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 like to state them. Okay. Thank you very much.